Hi, my name is Andy Melton from andymelton.net and today I want to talk to you about the Raspberry Pi. So why do I want to talk to you about the Raspberry Pi? The biggest reason is to increase awareness. Now, it's getting more and more popular when I am in a tech savvy crowd that the Raspberry Pi is much more likely to be known about. However, when I'm with my less technically savvy friends or family, they don't know anything about it. So I wanted to do a video and blog post talking about the Raspberry Pi that may help them understand what it is and get interested in it. I also wanted to show the possibilities of what the Raspberry Pi can be used for. There are thousands upon thousands of projects out there that the Raspberry Pi can be used for. If it requires a computer at the heart of the project, you can use a Raspberry Pi for it. So what is the Raspberry Pi? It's not a pie, it's not a delicious dessert, although I wish I could have a Raspberry Pi, but I'm dieting so I can't have that. The Raspberry Pi is a single board computer, and I have a couple of examples right here. Uh, this is one of them. This is the Raspberry Pi 3. And then I've got a, another one here. Uh, this is the Raspberry Pi Zero. This one specifically is the Zero W. They are single board computers or system on a chip. So as you can see this here, it's got basically a motherboard and then it has your connection ports on one side of it. So you've got Ethernet and USB. And then on this side, you've got um, old style video and audio. And then you have an HDMI port. And then you have a power port. And then there's also a port to plug in a camera. And then there's also um, a port here to do all sorts of add-ons. And then the same thing goes with this one here. So you've got your HDMI port, you've got a USB port, and a power port, and again, a camera port. Both of these also have a micro SD card slot on them, and that's how you boot the operating system on these. So what are the differences between these? Uh, this one, obviously has more built-in ports and it's a little bit more expensive it's $35 this one this one the Raspberry Pi Zero W um, is $10 um, there is another version the previous version um, that's in this case looks exactly the same as this board uh, that's actually $5 but it doesn't have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built into it So the Raspberry Pi was originally designed for kids. It was designed for kids so that they could learn computer programming and learn how a computer works without having to use their family's home computer. So they could take one of these, put it into a case if they wanted, connect it to a spare monitor or a television, use a spare mouse and keyboard, and learn how to program. So if something went wrong, hopefully it's just software related, they could just reload the operating system and be back up and running in no time. If it's hardware related, this one, $35. And instead of your family's home computer that could be potentially thousands of dollars getting ruined. When these were introduced to the market, of course, they were intended for kids, but the DIY and maker community took these and ran with them. There are thousands, maybe even millions of projects that are out there that the DIY and maker community have used the Raspberry Pi for. So speaking of projects, out on my website, I have linked to four of my favorite projects. Uh, there are thousands, there are so many out there that I, I love. I'm not able to link out to all of them, uh, but I decided to link out to four of them. 
Uh, the first one is this 3D scanner. And so someone has built a cage, uh, basically, uh, that has a lot of Raspberry Pis around um, connect with a camera connected. And it allows them to take a 3D image of a person and print it out on a 3D printer, uh, which is fantastic. Um, it's not holographic technology, but we're getting there. Uh, one of my other uh, favorite projects is Talking Toys. Um, this little blurb on my website is nothing about the project, uh, but if you take a look at it, you'll see that they have taken a Fisher-Price talking telephone, this one specifically from the Toy Story franchise, and put a Raspberry Pi into it. Uh, on this one, they have made it so that when you dial uh, one of the numbers, you can get a weather report. Uh, if you dial one of the other numbers, you can get a, a news report and various things like that. Um, I do recommend the video. It's, it's entertaining. Um, Astro Pi, I like this one because if you'll notice, I'm wearing a NASA shirt. Um, I love space and exploration. Uh, but this project was designed by kids and actually sent to the International Space Station. Um, I highly take, highly recommend uh, reading about that one. Uh, the last one is about irrigation controllers. Uh, this was one of the better articles, I thought. Uh, there are hundreds of these out there, but I thought this one was pretty good if you're interested in making an irrigation controller with a Raspberry Pi. Uh, again, like I said, there are thousands of Raspberry Pi projects out there, um, but just to get you interested, maybe I linked out to four of my favorite ones on my website. So what would the average person use a Raspberry Pi for? I honestly think that the average person could use the Raspberry Pi as a desktop computer or a kitchen computer. I have one set up downstairs in our dining room that is directly attached to the kitchen and I call it my kitchen pie. So anytime I'm downstairs and I want to look up something, I want to look up a map, I want to look up the weather, I can do so without having to pull out my phone or run back upstairs to get to my normal desktop computer. You could throw one in the garage to use for whenever you're uh, looking up how to do something with your car. You could put one in your guest room. You could use one as your home theater computer. Now what would a more technically savvy person use a Raspberry Pi for? Um, you could use one for a VPN server to establish a encrypted connection to your home office over an unsecure Wi-Fi connection. Uh, you could use the Raspberry Pi as a thin client. Uh, one of the projects that I fully intend on implementing in my house is uh, a thin client network where uh, downstairs I would have a Raspberry Pi set up as a thin client that would connect to my server upstairs and pull a uh, desktop um, probably a Windows desktop down and then if I have multiple Raspberry Pis around my house I could connect to the very same desktop and pick up where I left off in the previous room. Um, another thing that I think a Raspberry Pi is perfect for is digital signage. Um, I go into a lot of restaurants these days and I see where they have an LCD display displaying their menu and it's connected to a computer. I know that these retail solutions, they can't be cheap, but I really think a person could do it cheaply and do it very well with a Raspberry Pi and an affordable LCD monitor or um, television. Another thing you could do is use uh, the Raspberry Pi as a uh, web server. Uh, now granted, you probably don't want to use it as 
your company's public facing web server but you could if you don't have a lot of traffic or you just want to use it as your internal intranet server you can most certainly use it for that and you could also use it as a file server one of my favorite uh, Raspberry Pi projects that I saw in the Magpi magazine was called Pi Preserve where someone took a Raspberry Pi uh, they made an enclosure for it out of a mason jar and some wood and they set it up so that uh, the, the major purpose of it was for people to be able to use it to back up their uh, photos from their mobile device. I often worry about new families that are getting started and they're taking photos with their cell phone. You know, I always wonder, are you backing up your photos? Where are you backing up your photos to? Um, something like this would be the perfect solution for that. Um, I even think it would be a perfect, a great gift ideal in many situations. So what do you need to get started? So obviously you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. So you could choose the $35 variant of the Raspberry Pi. You could choose the $5 variant or the $10 variant just depending on your needs. If your project doesn't need Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, go with the $5 Raspberry Pi Zero. If you do need Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, go with the Raspberry Pi Zero W. You're also going to need a case. If you're going to have a Raspberry Pi, please get a case for it. I hate when I see projects out there where uh, someone just has their Raspberry Pi connected and setting randomly somewhere on their desk. I mean, it might be okay for prototyping, but for long use scenarios, put it in a case. Um, I really like the Raspberry Pi Foundations case. Um, it's very nice, very elegant. Um, it comes apart like this. And you can see inside and then you can also take off the sides like so if you're doing some testing or you want to run some cables so then you're also going to need a micro SD card um, you can get away in some cases with something as small as 8 gigabytes I don't recommend it. Um, I would highly recommend that you only stick with 16 gigabytes or above. And as affordable as micro SD cards are these days, get the biggest one you can. Um, they go on sale all the time on Amazon. Um, I think I got this 32 gigabyte one the other day on Amazon for less than $10, I want to say. And of course it was free shipping with Amazon Prime. So fantastic. Um, you're also going to need, and I've got a ton of stuff on my desk here, so if you hear stuff falling, that's why. And everything's all bunched up, of course. You're going to need an HDMI cable. So if you have, if you're going to go with the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero, you're going to need to go with the um, mini HDMI cable or I'm sorry the HDMI to mini HDMI so you've got the regular HDMI on this end and then you've got the mini um, HDMI port on this end and then you would just plug the mini onto this end and then the regular into your monitor or television if your monitor does not have an HDMI port you can get um, a DVI, so you've got that big long connector. This is not VGA, uh, this is a DVI connector. Take that off. It's one of those. It's not the best. I know it's not focusing very well, uh, but you can get a DVI to regular HDMI cable. Um, there are VGA two HDMI adapters out there, but 
I've not had any experience with them, and from what I've read, the quality is subpar. Um, so I would avoid that if you can. And then of course, a regular HDMI to HDMI cable. Um, I do highly recommend the Amazon Basics. I've had great luck with them, and they are very affordable. Uh, you're also going to need a power adapter. Uh, your power adapter has to be uh, 5 volts, uh, 2 amps. Um, I really like this one because it's specifically designed for the Raspberry Pi. And I'll try to get the camera to focus in on this. Uh, but it has a... Okay, that's not going to work. Sorry about that. But it has a heart and it has um, an R and the Pi symbol. So love Raspberry Pi. Um, I also like this one because it has a power button right here that you can use to turn the Pi on and off with. So if you've got your uh, plug all the way down on the bottom of the floor um, and you have this farther up, you can use it instead of having to reach all the way down to the power port to uh, disconnect power from your Pi. And I have a link to this um, in my blog and in the video description as well. Um, you're also going to need a keyboard and I'm going to drop it and a mouse. Um, this one I have, these are both PS2. Um, I know it's kind of old school, but I happen to like the way this um, keyboard feels when I type on it. Uh, so I kind of kept it. Um, it came with one of my HP computers. And you can use a... There's a ton of stuff on this desk. <laughs> so you can use a PS2 uh, to USB adapter to connect it to the Pi, uh, which is nice because then you're only using the one uh, USB port. And of course, you're going to need a monitor or television. And like I said, uh, preferably one that has an HDMI port on it, which most modern uh, monitors and televisions do these days. So some additional items that you're going to want for the Raspberry Pi Zero is you're going to want to get uh, one of these uh, they're referred to as USB on-the-go cables. Uh, what this will allow you to do is plug in to the micro USB port on the Raspberry Pi Zero and then connect a regular sized USB device. Um, it's not required, but I do highly recommend for if you're going to do much work with the Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, that you get a USB hub because obviously the USB, or I'm sorry, the Raspberry Pi Zero only has one USB port. If you do go with the Raspberry Pi Zero and uh, not the Raspberry Pi Zero W that has the built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you're going to want to get a USB uh, Wi-Fi adapter. Um, I've had very good luck with the TP-Link um, adapters. Um, I have links to those on my blog as well. Um, these are relatively affordable, under $15. There are some um, even as low as under, under $8 or $9. It uh, just depends on what type of wireless connection you have in your house or office that you want to use. So I realize that, you know, this $35 this one five dollars and this one ten dollars that all sounds great but then you have to add buy all these extra things like cables and adapters and dongles and that could easily add up um, i highly recommend that before you go out and buy any of these additional items uh, that you check in your closet uh, that you check with family and friends uh, you go to the electronic recycling stores or you go to the thrift stores um, in Boise, we are lucky enough to have the Reusium where you can get all of these items um, for very affordably. Um, but 
more often than not, if you ask around, people have spare keyboards that they're more than happy to get rid of. Some people have spare monitors that they're more than happy to get rid of, um, oftentimes for free, just because they're, they want to get the clutter out of their house. If you're not willing to go out and buy all of these additional pieces to the puzzle to get up and running, you can go out and purchase starter kits. Um, there are uh, starter kits from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Uh, you can get some from Canakit. Uh, the Adafruit company has some. Uh, there's the Kano computer kits and PyTop. Um, look at the links in my blog or in this video uh, to take a look at those. I personally feel like a lot of those are somewhat expensive. Um, some of them are over $100, but in some cases you may want to go that route because uh, tracking all these additional pieces to the puzzle is not something that you want to do. Um, me, I have a lot of this stuff on hand, so it's no big deal for me to pull the, this bare cable out of my closet to plug into my Pi. So I know what you're wondering next. How do I set it up? So stay tuned. Um, I plan on doing a blog post about setting up the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi Zero and the Raspberry Pi Zero W up from scratch. I'm not sure yet if it's going to be an individual blog post or one giant blog post, but I do plan on doing a post in the future about setting it all up uh, from scratch, from the box, brand new, start to finish. That way you can see the process of pulling it out of the box, putting it into the case, putting the um, operating system onto the SD card, and starting it up and getting it set up and so you can get up and running with it. So until I do get more blog articles posted about the Raspberry Pi, uh, you can check out these additional resources. Uh, please check out the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Uh, there's a lot of great uh, blog articles about projects that they have found uh, that people are doing with the Raspberry Pi. And they've also got tutorials on their site um, telling you how to set it up as well. Um, there are tons of tutorial sites out there. Uh, there's a couple of magazines, uh, the Raspberry Pi magazine and Magpie. Magpie is the more official Raspberry Pi magazine and I highly recommend it. You can actually go out and download it uh, for free in PDF format. Um, you can pick one, a copy up in Barnes & Noble. Um, it's very nice to have a physical copy of the magazine, but typically they run for $15 at Barnes & Noble, which is a little spendy for a magazine in my opinion. Um, you can also check out YouTube. There are tons and tons of Raspberry Pi projects on YouTube. Um, and in the meantime, um, take a look at the article that I posted out on my blog about the Raspberry Pi. That is where you will find all of the links to all of the items uh, that I said are necessary for getting it up and running with the Raspberry Pi. Um, I also link out to some of those starter kits um, if you're more interested in going that route. So I hope I've got you a little bit interested in the Raspberry Pi, hopefully enough to at least take a look at my blog article and look at some of the projects that I linked to. And please stay tuned because I do plan on posting more articles in the future. Um, definitely stay tuned for the uh, tutorials that I will be posting about how to set up the Raspberry Pi. Um, those will be posted hopefully within uh, the next few days. Fingers, fingers crossed on that one. <laughs> so thank you for your time and have a great day.